Welcome to launching a Kickstarter part three with Lee White. Uh, this episode we're going to go over the detailed numbers of a campaign. So how do you figure out how much a, an item costs within your Kickstarter campaign? And how do you set the overall numbers for a Kickstarter campaign? It can get pretty complicated. And so that's what we're going to be, going to be talking about in detail today. I'm going to show you some spreadsheets and all kinds of fun stuff. Normally not too many artists like to get into the, the nitty gritty of the numbers, but you need to understand how this stuff works. And if you're planning on uh, possibly launching your own Kickstarter, uh, this will be crucial to the success of your project. Um, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to be uh, giving you guys some of the resources that I'm talking about in today's video. I'm going to uh, give you a couple of Excel files or numbers if you're using it on the Mac uh, that will kind of guide your project through. All you have to do is enter a couple of pieces of information and it will populate the fields on how much you need to make uh, on your Kickstarter campaign, how much it's going to cost you for a certain product, and I'll show you in detail those those things. Um, I'm giving you those away for free. If you go to my website, leewhiteillustration.com, and uh, you know the, the the main page that you're going to land on is my project here, which is the hardcover book that I'm doing of all of my work for the past couple of years. It's 124 page hardcover. All you have to do is to get the free Excel files or the free numbers files is enter uh, your name and email um, into my. Uh, I'm using this as a way to gather emails for my campaign. And so if you want the free stuff. Just send me an email, say send me the free files, and I will get that to you. So that is just some free stuff I'm offering, or you can just email me l.white at leewhiteillustration.com. You can go to my contact page here, do the same thing, but I've just made it easy. If you just go to my website, you can just fill this out and send it, and I will uh, give you the link and you can download the free stuff. I did want to show you just real quick before I get into all the numbers. Uh, how the book is looking and, and, and what it's going to consist of. This is the InDesign file of me building the book. So the book isn't totally done, but I can scroll through it and show you some of what it's going to be. I, I put out a request on Facebook to see what people wanted in a, in, to see in a book, in an art book. And a lot of people wanted to see process. And so that's one of the big things that I'm focusing on. I'm still populating these, these pages and getting all of the images in. And so there's some pages that are still blank right here. It says show painting process, but I'm gonna show kind of how I work and, and, and a lot of the rough stuff that you don't get to see on a lot of projects. I'm gonna show rough sketches and uh, tone studies and you know just how, how the work gets made. Uh, starting from scratch, and I'm going to also be talking a little, quite a bit about the stories that uh, that the images come from, because a lot of people want to see that. And so this is just a kind of a a primer. Here I'll zoom out, and you can see this is the overall layout of the book. A lot of little images here. I didn't want to go through the entire book because there's a lot of it that's still still being populated. But you can just see, and you know, some like I said, some pages are blank. I don't have that that stuff in there yet. But uh, anyway, so that's kind of how the project's going to be. And then at the end of the project, I'm going to let me scroll down. I'm going to have a lot of um, individual sketches and things like that. Let me get in. Just quick sketches and stuff that I do, paintings and just uh, just a bunch of stuff uh, at the end um, that I do just for just for fun. So this is a pro you know this project is based on personal artwork, and so. It's just a, a lot of different images, and I'm going to talk about the process of, of how, how they were made. Um, so that's that for right now. Again, sign up uh, for my mailing list at leewhiteillustration.com uh, on that first page if you want to know more about this project and get the free downloads. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the numbers. What I thought I would start with is just a basic overview of how your campaign should be handled just in a just a big broad kind of sense in terms of the numbers and we're going to get really detailed with how to set up your numbers how to figure out how much your kickstarter needs to uh, be set for but i thought i'd start with this overview and i like to use big simple numbers uh, or big simple ideas in the beginning just so it kind of gets clear before you get into all the numbers and the nuances because there's a lot of them uh, and so i start here so there's only four basic simple things and that's 
just going through them real quick, figure out how much your product will cost to make. That's a fairly easy one, which I'll go over in a second. Figure out how much the incidentals will cost, which is shipping, packaging, storage, handling, all that kind of stuff is second. And that's where it gets really detailed and, and nuanced and takes a little bit of time to figure out. And that's also the area where, where you'll get killed if you don't understand it and you haven't done enough research. And that's where a lot of people have lost uh, money doing a Kickstarter, at least in the research that I've done. So that's part two. Number three, and this is another one that people have lost on because they don't factor in the fees that are involved. Uh, you have to pay Kickstarter. You have to pay uh, a credit card service if people are paying by credit card. And those can take uh, about 8% of your um, profit down. Uh, and so you got to factor those in. And then at the end, obviously adding 10 to 20% extra to be safe. Um, your project may have a couple more things you want to add in, uh, like advertising. I didn't go over that at all. But these are the main four, uh, and if you do these four, at least get a ballpark here, you should be fairly safe. Um, I should add before I get into all of the detailed numbers, um, all of these documents will be made available. If you want to email me at l.white at leewhite.com. Again, that's l.white at leewhite.com. Sorry, leewhiteillustration.com. Um, so l.white at leewhiteillustration.com. If you email me, uh, which I'll put this uh, up on the screen in a few minutes, you will uh, get a free, you can have a free version of all these documents and, and, and it's a pretty good template to get started. I'll mention that later on uh, as well. Okay, so let's get into it. So these are the four kind of things that I'm going to go over, but I, I, I thought I'd put that up on the screen first because it's a little simpler than some of these numbers. Now these numbers are, are fairly detailed and a lot of artists are not detailed that in, in, in this way. And so it pays to be detailed in this way because you can lose a lot of money here. And you can also make a lot of money here. I'm gonna zoom in real quick. There we go. Just a little bit. So this first, uh, this first document is just for a singular product. So remember, step one is figuring out how much your product's gonna cost to make. So this first one, I'm just gonna go into the printing of my hardcover book. So that is, uh, that is step one. So get, I need to get the book. Now there's other things like the different tiers of things that you're gonna offer, and those might have a cost too, and you gotta figure that up for, like this individually for each one of those. But the book is the main deal, so that's the one that I wanna have um, figured out. This is a template, by the way, it's an altered template of, of one that I already found online. And, uh, and so I'm just modifying these things. They're, I'm giving them away for free. They're, they were, I, was, I found them for free too, uh, but I did modify them quite a bit and just to make them a little bit easier to look at. There's nothing worse than looking at a bunch of numbers and there's no organization to it, to it at all. So getting into the first step, I'm gonna zoom in a little more so I can isolate this stuff and, whoops, wrong way. Okay, so fixed cost, uh, this is the cost for doing different amounts of product. And you'll notice that there is a significant price break at different points in time. The, the reason you wanna calculate different runs is you wanna keep your Kickstarter as cheap as you can originally and still do the project. Now that that means that, you know, I absolutely have to have 1500 units, this will be my minimum. Right now, I just thought I would start at, and, and get different prices for a lot of different tiers. And what you wanna do is start as low as you can, and then if, you're, if you get lucky or you have a great product and people are investing in it, as you get more sales, you start buying more product. That's called front filling your inventory. Very important concept because what happens is if I can print 2,500, but I only sell 600, that means I still have a lot of product left over that I can still sell. You don't want your Kickstarter to be the ending of your campaign, by the way. The Kickstarter is just to get the thing made, uh, and then you start actually selling it. So, I mean, obviously it is for sale during the Kickstarter, but the goal is to have product at the end, not to be out of product once the Kickstarter is over. It's a very important concept. You also don't wanna ask for too much and then not fund, right? So you need to know what all these are. So I'll, I will probably ask for, uh, I, I'm not sure completely what my um, ending Kickstarter request is gonna be in terms of the financial amount I'm gonna ask for, but I'm gonna try to make it low and then I'm going to hopefully get high enough past my goal 
to at least print 2,000 units. As you print more things, as you make more product, uh, your cost goes down. And so this first column right here is my printing cost. And you can see right about 2,000 units, that's where my cost goes down con pretty considerably. Um, it's more expensive to do less. In other words, it goes down here, but then my cost is getting away from me once I get around 3,000 units. So 2,000 is my, is in, in my head, that's my goal. And again, if I make more money than I ask for, that's what go I'm gonna do with the money is buy more product. And, and instead of putting adding on all these goals and things like that, I'm trying to front fill enough product to sell in the future. So anyway, important to know. So $8,155.69 is how much it will cost me to print 2,000 units. That's $409 a piece. Not a bad cost, consider if you've ever been in a, someone who's priced out books, sometimes they get, if you print it in the States here, it's a lot of money. I had three quotes done and I, I posted on Facebook about this, but I had, this one's printing it with a company that's in the United States, but prints in China. The next quote I got was a com printing company in Utah and the fee was uh, 22,000. So a lot more, they, they were actually, sorry, they were pricing the 3,000 units. Um, but they priced, they, theirs was 22000 and there was another company in Portland, Oregon. I'd like to do it locally if I can. Their quote was over $40,000. $47,000 was their quote. And so I'm going to go with the first one. Uh, it's, it's a no-brainer. I'd love to vote with my dollars and, and keep it here in Portland. But it's the difference between actually making a product or not making a product. And there's a lot of conversations about getting stuff made in China and the ethics and all that stuff. It comes down to finances for me. I'm a small business and I just can't do anything I want to. If I got really successful, I'd probably I'd probably print in Utah and, and pay a little bit more. Anyway, I digress. So the shipping, this is an interesting one because this is shipping to me. So for me to have the product uh, costs a lot of money. It's, it's one that you don't think about when you're getting quotes, but just getting the product to me and how long that's going to be, this is just for a standard delivery, nine weeks is gonna to take to get this product from the, from the proof approval. Now, they can expedite it, but then it goes up again. So you gotta figure out how much time you're going to be willing to factor in. If you need it by a certain date, you're gonna pay more. Um, and I don't know what that is. The next thing to think about, I just added a column here, shipping notes. Um, this gets really expensive. Uh, or sorry, sorry, not expensive. It gets really heavy, 3,776 pounds is what this thing will be. And so one of the things that I was thinking about doing is having a fulfillment company to handle all of this. And what that means is I don't receive all the books. A, 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 another company receives all the books and their job is to, when I get an order, I send it to them, the order to them, and then they package it up and send it out. Now you do pay for that, which I'll go over in a second, but I don't want 4,000 pounds worth of books at my house. I don't have enough storage for that, I don't wanna be running back and forth between a storage facility. I am still an illustrator and I need to do my work. I can't all of a sudden turn into a shipper. Um, so just something to think about. That's a lot of volume and a lot of people don't think too much about that. Uh, so there's my total, uh, my goal, ideally, you know, I'd love to fund 3000, but so you can see the different numbers down here. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm hoping for at least 2000. So $10,466. Now here's the variable costs that come with just the book. Storage, my fulfill, I'm gonna use printninja.com to print the books, and they're also my um, fulfillment and storage company. So my book's going to weigh about a pound and a half. That becomes very important, and we'll talk about that in a second. You can see I've got the different amounts here because it, it changes um, how, how much your package weighs changes how much uh, everything costs. And shipping has killed a lot of people. I talked about that in the first video. So you gotta be careful there. Uh, your shipping will, will get in the way. I wanna keep this the whole box and everything under two pounds if I can, and obviously still get the product that I want. You don't wanna start scrimping on the product just to save on shipping, and then you have something that people don't want. So important, if I do 3,000 books, I just got a quote from the printer or the, the storage facility, 3,000 books is three pallets, and a pallet is $20 a month just to store there waiting to be shipped. And so that's about $600 a year. What that equals, if I did a, just a yearly amount, that equals 30 cents per book. 
to store it per, per year. So I have to factor that in there. Now this is the cost for the order fulfillment. This is Print Ninja. Again, they're going to um, package it up and send it out to my customers. And so they charge a dollar for each first item and then 25 cents for an additional item. Now I am gonna do a book and then some of them are gonna have prints. Some of them will have two prints. Those are different things that I offer in my campaign. Uh, so I just estimated it at $1.25. That may go down on some orders. It may go up on some orders. So I'm trying to balance that out. So $1.25 is the cost that they charge to do that. Not bad at all considering the service. I need to put the book in something so it doesn't get damaged while it's being shipped. Um, and so they charge a dollar for a padded envelope. So that, and this is before shipping. This is just getting it ready to ship from the uh, storage facility to the customer, to, to whoever orders it. So next up is mailing. And I've got a couple different quotes here. I'm not factoring that in ultimately all at the end. Um, but this is commercial pricing, which I'm gonna try to get. And the next one is media mail, which is probably what I'll do if I'm going through the uh, Print Ninja. I think they use just standard media mail and it's three dollars and nine cents for anything under two pounds. The second it goes to two pounds one ounce, it now goes to this number. You can see, it's not much, but once you multiply that by hundreds of units, hopefully, uh, it adds up. And then if it goes to four pounds plus, it's gonna be that, or excuse me, a little bit anything over three pounds automatically groups in with that. So, there's variable kind of things. You have to know how much how much does a book weigh once it's wrapped up and packaged needs to be less than two pounds to hit this this number. Now international shipping, I just did a couple of tests going to the UK and uh, $22.50 was the amount that that cost. Very important. Um, Jake um, said that it's about, Jake uh, Parker, sorry, my, one of my partners who's done a very successful Kickstarter, Said, said about a third of the of the backers are international. So if it costs $22.50 here, if I add up two purchases of media mail and one inter international, this is domestic, and one international and divide by three, that equals $9.56 per unit for shipping. That doesn't include the order fulfillment. So you can see there's a bunch of numbers there have about $12.11 total, and that's what that consists of. You can see all the highlighted fields. That is $9.56, bag for shipping. So this is the cost for actual shipping. The bag for shipping, the order fulfillment, and the storage fee. And that's what that is. And so that gives you an idea about how much um, each this item costs me. So, and then you need to figure out, you know, per unit, if I've got, if it costs $4.09 a piece here, and then $12.11 here, uh, it's gonna be a little bit over 16 bucks um, on average to get this thing out. Some will be cheaper because they're domestic, some are gonna be more because they're international. Now this number's kinda cool up here. This, is, uh, this will auto populate, so once you enter in some different numbers, if I just use my lowest amount, which is here, and pick different variable costs per unit. Those can change, and you can see I've got $7 in here. I don't know why that was in there. Um, probably some configuration that I was looking at. And then how much you're going to sell it for plus shipping. So if my book sells for $40 a piece, plus $10 for shipping, just say as an average, um, then I need to sell 129 books to break even, to make my cost back. So that's uh, just, just an idea on when you're, how many backers you have to have to hit that break even point. I need 129 backers if this was my only cost. And you can play with the numbers and mess around with it. So this is just a way to play with numbers on a single product. Now obviously your campaign is more than a single product. So let me switch to my next one. And like I said earlier, if you email me l.white at leewhiteillustration.com, um, or you can just go to my website. If you just go right to leewhiteillustration.com, the first page will bring up a uh, 
uh, email that you can fill out and just send to me. It, it's it, it the first page of my website right now is the landing page for this Kickstarter, and you can just enter your email in there. But I'll send you just say send me the forms or send me the send me the numbers or whatever, and I will send you these uh, these documents if you want to play with your own uh, your own Kickstarter. I'll also send you if you want. This is available from the post office. It's nothing that I made. Uh, this is the amount it costs to mail books from the post office. This is media mail rates. And so you can see the different rates with pounds, not over two pounds, not over three pounds, not over four pounds. Um, and so you can see the different rates that it is and you can play around with it. Again, shipping kills product projects. And so be very careful there. Understand how much um, what you're doing is gonna cost. Okay, now we get into the real nitty gritty. I'm gonna zoom in. Let me talk about the whole document first. So this is a fantastic document, and I've tried to make it really easy to look at because there's a lot of uh, numbers documents and Excel forms that are not easy to look at, a lot of numbers. And this one has a lot of numbers too, but I tried to make it at least pleasing and, and organized so you don't get overwhelmed with them too much. Um, and so I'm gonna go through a couple of these things. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on each one and it, it does make sense as I get into it. So let me just zoom in. Okay, so this first section right here, this yellow section, is just the reward, the rewards that I'm offering in my campaign, the different things that you can buy if you invest in my Kickstarter campaign. Now the big thing that I want to stress in the, in, in this video is keeping your costs under control. A lot of people think when they're coming up with these tiers that they got to give all this different stuff to people at each level. And that's great to give different things, but you've got to consider, again, shipping is a disaster on some of these lower uh, level items. And so what I tried to do and what I want to encourage you to do as well is make something, make a couple of items that are high value to your customer and don't cost you anything to send out. And so my first three tiers, and I haven't totally figured out all of these yet. This is this whole thing's still in production. Um, my first one is a thanks, uh, and I will list you in the book. Um, so if somebody invests in my level one, which I'll, I'll go over the cost of these things in a second, but if somebody just says they, they wanna invest the minimum amount, I think I'm gonna do like a $5 price point there. I'm gonna have a page in, my, in the finished book that lists you and says, hey, thanks for donating. That means that they're contributing to my campaign, they get something out of it, they get listed in the book and they get to help out the campaign. And, uh, but I don't have to ship something to that person. So there's no cost to me in terms of storage, in terms of shipping, in terms of production, uh, and in terms of time as well. So that one um, has some value to the customer. I think that's not gonna be too many people that do that one. The next one is a digital download of the book. Again, that next one, they get a value out of it. They get the whole book, high resolution. Um, it doesn't cost me shipping, doesn't cost me storage, and I can send it out immediately. So those customers will get something very quick. They'll get something before the hardcover people do. That'll be my next tier up. And again, it, it doesn't cost me anything extra to do that level of tier. The third level for me, same thing. No cost to me, high value to the customer. I love that equation. Uh, so they get the digital copy of the book, plus a, um, a, a real-time watercolor painting demo or some kind of painting demo. I may have a couple of different demos to offer, depending on which one you want. So, and those, those will be available as a digital download. So levels one, two, and three, no cost to me, except for time of making them and, and getting them ready, but then I can send them out for free and it doesn't kill my campaign. Level four is where most people are going to buy um, in terms of my campaign, and that is just a one copy of the hardcover book. That's what most people are probably going to want, and that's what that is there. And that's the first one that I actually have to start factoring in all that stuff I was talking about, storage, printing, um, you know, shipping, all that. The next one will be a hardcover copy plus prints. The next one will be two book, two hard copy books. I'm not doing soft cover, it just it makes it too clunky to get that much printing done, and, and all these different kinds of printing. Uh, the seventh level of my campaign will be uh, original drawings that may come matted, they may come framed, I'm still trying to figure that out, but it will be original art of some, in some form. And level eight is an actual original painting at a pretty good size, probably 20, uh, 22 by 28 framed will be that original painting and there's gonna be 
uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff associated with that. It's expensive to ship that stuff. And so I got I still have to factor some other stuff in there. But I, so the what I just went through with my book, I need to go through with all these things as well to make sure that I understand the, the costs involved. But so that's what you enter up here. And uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Now, as I go down, you'll see each one of those things that I just went over listed in gray. And I've got you can change these figures if you want to, but I've got it. If I if I only made one, how much would that cost? If I made 10, how much would that cost? If I made 100, and so on. Now, like I said before, the thanks doesn't cost me anything. The digital download doesn't cost me anything, so there's no numbers listed there. The digital plus digital book plus a demo, no, it doesn't cost me anything. Now, here's where we get into what I'm doing now. The hard copy, hard copy books, which what, what we just went over, $7,162 for if I print 1,000, this much for 2,000, $13,000 if I print 3,000. So there's three variables and I can play with that at different areas too. Now I still gotta figure this stuff out. My, if I'm doing prints, how much two books cost. Uh, uh, two books actually doesn't cost any more than this because those will be printed in the same run. And so each thing has its own little category. So you fill those out as, as needed depending on what you're giving away. Now, as I come over here, this is where we get into some pretty serious numbers. So most people, I've got, I've got the listing up, up here. So these are my assumptions. If I only have 100 backers, you can see this square up here. If I only have 100 backers, this whole tier is gonna, is gonna be the numbers associated with that. If I go to this next row, not bad. I got 250 backers. From here, I'm just, and I'm just guesstimating as best I can on all this stuff. Some people, like uh, Jake Parker or Mel Milton, they went crazy and they got they got you know thousand backers or or two thousand or maybe more. I'm, I'm not even sure. I need to go check those numbers. And you should check numbers by the way of people who are doing like projects and you. I just don't have theirs pulled up right now. Um, so these are the numbers that I'm assuming. I would love to go over 1,500 backers. That would be amazing. Um, typical, I'm just going to guess at 500. That would be a pretty low performing campaign, but I like to know where that is. So I'm using that as my baseline. If I do really bad, I'll be here at 100. But I like to know what those numbers, how those numbers work out. So I need to list the cost of each of those reward tiers. This is the cost to my customer, how much they're going to pay. So maybe, and I'm not totally set on this yet. I'm still figuring it out, like I said. But $5 for to be listed in the book and a thanks. $20 for a digital download, high resolution. $30 for a digital download plus a demo, the video demo. $40 for the hard copy book. $40 plus $15, so it's $55 for the prints, or a, a book and a print. Two books are going to be $70, so I'm offering a, basically $10 off there if you buy two. Drawing is going to be $500, and original painting is going to be about $500 less than I normally sell them for, so $1,100. Um, so that's my, that's my price points right now that I'm playing with. Going down a little bit to the next um, grouping of numbers, this is how many people will buy each one of these options. Now again, this is just a guess. If you calculated this on a bell shape, uh, or excuse me, on a graph, this would look like a bell shaped curve. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm guesstimating on. It's a good way to guess. So how many, per, in percentage wise, how many people are going to buy the thank you as the only thing they buy? I say 3%. Again, I'm making up these numbers. I'm, the big reason I'm making up these numbers and not using other numbers, the reason these numbers exist, is because I think most people are going to buy in this grouping here. So most people will buy a hard copy book, hard copy book plus a print, or two books. I think that'll be the majority of people. So I want to make sure my high numbers are here, and then it's going to obviously, like a bell-shaped curve, go down. Again, this is for if I don't have a very successful campaign. So these numbers change a little bit as I go up. If I'm having better and better campaigns, the numbers change just a tad bit. So 3% will buy this, 5% of the people will buy the digital download, 4% will buy the next one up, 50% of the people will buy a hardcover book, that's my guess, 25% will buy a hardcover book plus prints, and so on. This always needs to equal 100%. Obviously, you can't go higher or lower than 100% of the people who are investing. Inventory front fill, I don't have this listed out in here, but I wanted to mention it, that the goal of this, um, the goal of this 
project is to front fill your inventory. Again, you want to just have inventory after the Kickstarter to then start selling to stores and other other um, vendors and sell at galleries, shows that I do personally and, and, and whatnot. And you even use it for promo. So inventory front fill is just an idea of how much you're gonna, how many products you're gonna have left over after the campaign's over. How much of your product is gonna be lost to failure? Depending on if you're, what you're doing, you may have some of that, some of that in there and that's factored into this form. In this case, I shouldn't have any failure of product. Um, now maybe there'll be a return, maybe one or two books gets damaged, but it'll be such a low percentage that I'm not calculating it in there. Maybe that'll be a mistake <laughs> that we'll find out uh, about much later. All right, so here's the expenses. Remember I said that there's fees with Amazon and, or excuse me, there's fees with Kickstarter. That's this first one. To be with Kickstarter, it costs 5% of your sale goes back to Kickstarter. That's what they charge to do a campaign. This number is the cost of a credit card uh, transaction. So 8%, if you combine these two together, of your campaign is gonna go back into uh, the, these fees. Again, I went over some of this stuff earlier in the other document. So the average packaging cost is a dollar. The average shipping cost, $3.22. The average handling cost, that's again how much it costs my fulfillment center to pack the book into a box and send it. Um, and then I just added a dollar on top of that as miscellaneous, just in case some other stuff comes up. So those are those are expenses that need to get added on top of the the print cost, which I have here. Now here comes the in if if those percentages I just went over that I talked about here happen, and this many people back it based on each column. Here's how much I will make in every single category and I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but you can see for yourself. Ultimately, if I have 100 backers and, it, and, and they buy how I think they're gonna buy, I will make $5,810 of income. That I'll probably lose money from that one, but I have a total down here at the bottom. But just so you know, this isn't, that's not how much I'll make overall. My, my expenses still gotta get taken out of that. If I do, let's see what that number was, 250, I'll make 19,000 on the on the campaign. If I have 500, it'll be 38,000 and so on for the different numbers. Let's see, go back up here. So 500, 1,000 and 1,500 backers. Uh, it goes up pretty rapidly, which is which is pretty nice, but also the cost goes up. So don't get too crazy on that. You're not going out and buying a, a BMW or a yacht. Um, well, you couldn't buy that for this amount anyway, but <laughs> I won't be rich at the end of this because your cost goes up as backers purchase. Um, the, the, the products. This is how much inventory based on each, and this all auto populates by the way, you don't need to fig, fill all these out. You just fill out the few things um, at the top and this auto populates this, uh, this document. This is an important number here. Remember I was talking about front filling a few minutes ago. So this number is if I only have a hundred and 100 people that back me. This is how many books I'll have left over when it's done. And so on. Now you might be confused because why, how can you have 875 here, 975 here? Um, some of this math doesn't make sense, but what I did is I assumed that, let's see where it is. I'd have to find it in a second, but I'm assuming basically after I sell more than 250, which is this row right here, I will bump up how many I print so my costs go up. Um, oh, here it is, the hard copy book, book cost. So if I do 100 books, I'm gonna do that lower tier of printing, so it's cheaper for me. If I do 250, I'm gonna stay there because I don't wanna get too out of hand with my costs. Once I hit about 500 units, or back 500 backers, I'm gonna print more, and so it's gonna cost me more. Now, I know I'm zoomed in right here. Uh, I'll zoom back out in a second. I'm just trying to give you an idea of these things independently, and I'll go back. Okay, so here we are at the, the kind of nuts and bolts of the campaign. So this is your, pro your gross profit after your costs. Oh, sorry, gross profits overall. So on this first one, I have lost money. The second one is 12,000. 
the third one, 28,000. So there's, you can go through, I don't need to go through each, each category, but that's my gross profit. Now here's my total expenses on each campaign. And it auto populates down here too. Net profit from your Kickstarter campaign. So if I only have 100 backers, I will lose $2,465. Uh, so I won't, it won't fund if I only have 100 people backing. If I have 250 people backing, um, I'll make that much um, more. And maybe, uh, and that'll also pay for some of the printing of the posters and the prints and all that stuff. And you can see as that number goes up, it could be a very successful campaign, which I hope it is. Um, but you just want to know where that break even point is. That break even point is somewhere between 100 and 250. You can probably, I could probably figure that out pretty easily with a little bit of math. Now, this is an important number as well. Remember, I had after the campaign was done, I have this much left over of each, you know, the book run. Those have a value and I can sell them over time. So that's overstock or that's the front fill that I was talking about a few minutes ago. So the lifetime, if I sell out of each, each run, this is how much money you will make. I will make if I sell out of each run over time. And that's in addition to the Kickstarter campaign. So it's pretty good. The numbers work out pretty well over time, which is why I'm doing the campaign. The total profit uh, for each campaign, if every book sells out both in the Kickstarter campaign and after the print run is done, this is how much value it has after expenses over time. So that may take me five years to sell all of them, but that's the value of the overall project. So I'm so I obviously I would like to sell to print 3,000 rather than 500 because you make so much more uh, and the cost is so much less. So at the bottom, the final one to go to is the Kickstarter price. Uh, and that is down here. This is the minimum amount I need to ask for for each level it goes up to. So I'm probably going to ask for, you know, maybe I'll start here. Add, I haven't added the 10% to that. So maybe, maybe around 10,000 will be the starting, maybe a little bit more. And then as people buy, remember this column over here, E, is for only 100 backers. So as I get more backers, Again, I will print more and hopefully get into the higher numbers as I get more backers. So let me zoom back out. Hopefully that's not too overwhelming. This, like, like I said, this auto populates um, and you'll see where to enter in the numbers, but you just enter in, let me zoom in just a little bit. Ah. Okay, you just enter in these, you enter in the costs, and you enter in how much you think each thing's gonna cost. That's your, that's your, uh, or how much you're gonna sell it for, rather, this purple group. And then you gotta put in your, how many you think is gonna buy in each one, each in terms of percentage overall of your campaign. Figure out your expenses for your items. This will auto-populate down here, the income projections. The inventory needed will auto-populate. Um, and all this stuff actually down here was going to auto auto populate. So you should be good to go. Um, yeah, that should be it. I mean, I'm still working through it. So there may be some questions that you have, but at least it's a good enough document to get going. Again, go to my page at leewhiteillustration.com and you can, uh, fill out that form and email me if you want these documents for free or just email me straight at l.white at leewhiteillustration and I will um, give you a copy of the document. Hope this was helpful. I wish I had this information when I started. It took a lot of a lot of effort to get it to this point, uh, but I hope it's helpful for you. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, sharing the next video with you. Until then, talk to you later.